morning. Welcome to Lisa Live, broadcasting on Facebook Live today. So glad to be here with you guys, and I'm still adjusting a little bit here. And you guys are going to get to meet, it sounds like, my friend Carolyn. And Carolyn is the little wren that you hear singing in the background. I named her Carolyn because she's singing carols all the time. Hey, Valerie and Yvonne. So I welcome everybody here. We're on Facebook Live. Um, today's Facebook Live, I'm talking about um, succession planting. And I think that that's kind of like a lot of people think, oh, what the heck is that? I'm not bothering with that. Um, so I'm just going to tell you a little bit about it. So before we jump right in, hey, Joe from Georgia, um, jump right in. I want you to remind everybody that you can visit our website, thegardenersworkshop.com, to sign up for my farm news which is how you're gonna know about all the exciting things rolling out around here this summer and throughout the season, right? So it's right at the top of the page and we send you some free resources when you do that. Hey, Kathy and Latasha and Rebecca, neighbor, good morning. And um, so that's the way to really stay in the know. So I encourage you to do that. And then always, I appreciate, hey, Wanda from Alaska. Um, I appreciate everybody liking and sharing this broadcast. Not only does that keep it or save it onto your Facebook feed, that helps me. Um, so I really appreciate that. So today's, um, I wanna talk about succession planning and it does not matter if you are a farmer, a commercial grower or striving to be a commercial grower or just a gardener. It is equally, it can impact what you do equally on both sides of it. And I'm telling you y'all, it is, it will save you. And I'm just looking at my notes cause I jotted down some stuff this morning. Um, succession planting will save you. Hey, Angie Graves from Texas and Joe from Ohio. Um, succession planting is a bailout. It is an insurance policy. And I just want to talk a little bit about that because I hear I have my own sad stories, you know, we all do. And I am happy to share and air my dirty laundry as some people have said. Um, I'm happy to share my failures because I want to help other people. But I hear so many sad stories from folks struggling with different problems. And I'm telling you that um, succession planting bails you out of those problems, right? So, <clears throat> what I'm talking about, pest problems, wind problems, if you have a wind, we have wind storms here occasionally. Um, I'm hoping that that's not gonna happen. Well, I'm not hoping. I'm thinking it's not gonna happen as often for us. You know, I had open pasture next to my farm and we get, would get rolling wind through here and I would suffer a lot of damage sometimes from that. Well, now that they're, hey, Shauna, my friend Shauna is on morning. Um, now that they're building houses next to me, I'm thinking that some of that may stop because basically those houses are becoming a windbreak. So whether it's pest, winds, flooding, how many people, I suffered from bed flooding this winter in the you know, with my cool flowers, right? And then sometimes we just forget to start certain things and succession planting is a way to overcome and handle those problems you know, I mean, I'll say this to you, that this isn't just farming. This is an everyday life. I feel like I'm a fire extinguisher. That's how I say that my husband's job is too. He owns a plumbing business and he's a fire extinguisher. And when you realize that you are the fire extinguisher for your garden or your farm, meaning that you're the one that has to fix the problems, put out the fires, when you go into it thinking that way, then guess what? you're more prepared for it. And succession planting is really one of those dues because it can take a really negative situation and totally and completely turn it around. So, and I also want to mention that this is true whether you're growing flowers, vegetables, herbs, a mix of all of those together. Um, not putting all your eggs into one basket, y'all, is the real secret to succession planting. So, how, how does it work? What, it, what is succession planting? Well, first off, I want to say that 
I've already said that it saves you, but I'm telling you, until it happens to you that perhaps, I mean, we have people from all over on here. Good morning, Jessica from Kansas. And I saw the bottom of Oregon and somebody in Canada just a minute ago. Until it happens to you and then all of a sudden you realize, oh yeah, I have another little patch of beans planted over yonder or I have more sunflowers growing. Um, I'll tell you, I'll just go down a rabbit hole right here. So, you know, back in our high production years, we planted 1,200 sunflower transplants every week for 26 weeks. That's, in fact, what paid for my $30,000 John Deere tractor was the years of growing sunflowers in high production for our commercial customers. And so we did not net them. We do not film them. We, um, I mean, they basically get organic fertilizer put down, I till, bobo plants. They get watered in well, and then they're pretty much on their own. And overall, we do really, really well with that. Several years ago, and if I come across the picture, I will plant, I will post it on Facebook. Several years ago, on a Thursday afternoon, we had, I mean, it was the middle of summer, July, so there was many successions of sunflowers planted. And at about four o'clock in the afternoon, this incredible thunderstorm broke loose and this rushing wind came. They said it was like a 60 or 70 mile an hour wind and it laid down like five weeks of sunflowers, AKA $6,000. I mean, it just laid them down. And many of them were right on the cusp of blooming. It was horrible. Anyway, so we, I, I teach about in flower farming school how we saved some of those um, and moved on. But what was the saving grace of all of that was while we were literally snow shoveling sunflower stems away out of our way, um, I realized, oh wow, I have another garden at the other end of this garden that has all of our sunflowers beyond that. So I wasn't dead in the water. I'm telling you, suck, 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 I can't even speak. Succession planting can really, really save you. So I just wanna list, besides that kind of save, I wanna tell you some of the other saves. It spreads out the work. So, so many people were all guilty of this. We run out and plant, especially home gardeners, we run out and plant the entire garden at one time. Oh, and I have my man's coming home, so you'll hear that was our gate opening, and he's here now. Um, so instead of planting your entire garden at one time, we break it up into sections. I wanna say to you that my book, Vegetables Love Flowers, teaches all about this, y'all. So not only does it give you this backup plan in the event of a devastation of something, an event, of weather, pests, it spreads out the work. You're not starting all your seeds at one time. You're not starting it. You're not planting your garden at one time. So it kind of spreads out. Then that means everything else is spread out. You know, for those of us that are flower growing, we're not netting. Uh, back when we had 144 beds here, we didn't have to net all of them at the same time, right? So it spreads out the work. Then better yet, <clears throat> Y'all, I'm still dying with my allergies. We just cannot get it figured out. Anyway, <clears throat> sorry. It spreads out the harvest. So that means you're not cutting all the flowers or harvesting all the tomatoes or picking all the beans or harvesting all the basil at one time, right? It spreads out the life of your garden. Um, <clears throat> and I also wanna just mention here, I was gonna ask him to bring me some water. Um, it also, you will, cause I get this question often like, Hey, I thought you mulched your flower, your, um, pathways in your garden. I see that you did this in this particular picture. My strategies change all the time, according to the season, what I have available. Um, and I just want to mention that because the different timing of the tomatoes I plant in the first planting may have a little different strategy than the last planting that I plant in July, right? So if you see sometimes a variation in strategy, Stevie, Stevie, he can't hear me. I'll get him in a minute. Um, he's 
his he is famous y'all for I'm gonna turn the camera so y'all maybe can see him over there he is parked his car truck can you barely see it behind the tractors he leaves his truck doors open all the time so you hear the ding 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 I mean he's like famous for this anyway so he can't hear me okay um, so my strategies change depending on the timing so you might see me do something different with my first planting of a specific group than the last planting so i just wanted to put that out there vegetables love flowers really goes down these rabbit holes y'all you want to know the other thing because even though you might think that i have endless space here available to me for like seed starting that is not true we are in seed starting dire straits all the time back when we were in big production. Succession planting saves it. That means you don't have, you fill up your, you know, your heat mat or your germination chamber or whatever you're using it. And then you wait three or four days until they've done their job and they move on to lights and you start more stuff. Succession planting allows you to make the very best of your indoor seed starting um, space. And Carolyn gets to be a little annoying to me sometimes, y'all. Um, <clears throat> so succession planting will save you there. And here's the other thing, this is famous for me. So I'm always in a craziness for the first seed starting of the year. You know, I make my calendar back in January. I, I kind of start my plan and then I tweak it. Well, sometimes stuff doesn't come to mind. So after we have finished starting that round of that first succession of um, vegetables and flowers and herbs, oftentimes after it's kind of like on its way, that whole group of planting, I think, shoot, it happened this year. I want to start this new cucumber that I was told about that has a smaller leaf so that you can see the cucumbers better. I mean, how many of us have grown cucumbers like two feet long because they're hiding behind those big cucumber leaves? Anyway, I, I actually had the seed, but I didn't put it with our other seed, so it got missed. So the little Arkansas, little leafed Arkansas cucumber is now gonna be in our second rotation. So that's the other part of this whole rotation, right? So I wanna just speak just very generally about those disasters. Pests are a perfect example and squash is the example that I'm gonna use. Um, we have a great way of avoiding the squash bug. We use floating row cover and I talk all about that in the book, Vegetables Love Flowers too. But I don't always follow my own rule because having row covers down in the warm season is a problem for me because we're typically mowing the pathways. It just adds a lot of labor. So the way that I ensure that we're gonna have a lot of succession planting, a lot of long haul of squash, is we succession plant. We start squash every month right up until September here. Squash is pretty quick. And if we get a moment, I'll walk around the garden and show you, we've got a little squash already this big out in our garden. So succession planting means, and I plant it in different areas of our garden, that if the squash bug does, hey Long Island, um, if the squash bug does get those early plantings, then I have more plantings coming along and I'll try to walk around and show you that. And I also just posted a blog that talks about beans and squash all season long. I'm really, you know, we've, I, I tell in there that I'm really bringing vegetables back strong here on our farm. Um, as I've backed off being a mass producer of flowers, and I can't tell you how much fun I'm having. Our eating habits have already improved. Shauna, are you happy to hear that? We're doing more vegetables, so I'm looking for lots of new ways to do that. So we're growing a lot of different squashes. So pest pressure or pest disease taken up. Hey, Joni from Ohio. Um, pest taken out a specific planting of a crop you know, I don't hesitate to rip those plants out, to mow them however you get rid of them um, because I have another one coming on, right? Succession planting will really help you. I've already told you a wind story, right? The roaring wind that came through our garden and laid down $6,000 worth of sunflowers of which we probably saved a third of them. And it was a lot of, um, 
a lot of extra work. Anyway, yes, Shauna. So y'all have to know that Sean is working on a new book and it's a cookbook, anti-inflammatory cookbook. And I'm pumped. She and I, she doesn't know this yet, but she and I are gonna do a project together and we're gonna bring y'all in on it. I'm really trying to beef up making vegetables, more more of a Mediterranean diet with more vegetables in our garden and being able to know how to cook them and to prepare them. So y'all look forward to that. That's coming out later this summer. Um, so flooding, y'all know that um, we lost a lot of our cool flowers um, because our garden was, pathways were full of water this winter. It rained so much and I, due to poor judgment, didn't have a way for the water to get out very easily. You know, there is no real, there is a succession planting of cool flowers that very early spring, which I did, but a lot of cool flowers, we get too hot here too fast to do that. So, succession planting can help you, and I mean, I have friends all over the world, people are talking about different kind of catastrophic events. Flooding is really one of them, these torrential downpours, and um, so not only am I planting my garden with different eyes these days about making it so water, I just was speaking with, um, we have a private Facebook group for our flower farming students and I try to be in constant contact with them. And one of our students lives in an area where they are just being, in Oklahoma, where they are just being just engulfed with water and it's just ongoing. And we were strategizing over what could she do to help address that? And um, so you have to look at these things with new eyes. Hey, Alberta, we have sun finally too. Happy for it. Um, and I tell you the other thing about germ about um, succession planting that's unlikely that we don't think about. Hey, Mary Lynn, um, is that if you have crummy germination in a crop, you're already set up to start more. You know, and I know this question's gonna come up, well, how many successions and how often? That all depends on how long your growing season is. So let's just take um, the f person that's in Alberta. They're obviously warm season growing time is much shorter than mine being in Southeastern Virginia. So I do more warm season successions. She can do probably a couple or three cool season successions because she has cooler conditions, right? It's like people in New England. They can grow cool flowers almost all season long, unlike us in the South. So the foundation learning of what a warm season and a cool season annual is and what they need and then what you have helps you strategize what your succession plan will be. And vegetables love flowers can really help you with that. And then you know that there's a free book study available on my website. Um, go to the book like you're gonna buy it on our website. Doesn't matter where you bought it. Um, hey, Ozarks, um, and it's raining there. We're, we're, we're supposed to be having rain, and frankly, I'm ready for some rain, so I hope it's coming. I think it's coming later this afternoon. Um, be sure to go to the product page on my website, thegardenersworkshop.com, and claim your free book study. There's one for cool flowers and vegetables love flowers. And so starting seeds is another part um, of succession planting. It just, it's like a mindset, y'all. You know, I mean, it's like eating an elephant one little bite at a time instead of trying to gulp the whole thing down in one, um, in just one total overwhelming, never have enough time way. And I see that Charlotte from Mother Earth News, um, nope, that's not her, I don't think. Is that you, Charlotte? Um, I was just gonna mention that there's a great new blog or podcast on Mother Earth News that's on our website of me having a discussion with Ira um, from Southern Exposure Seeds. And we talk about, by the way, that little Arkansas, um, cucumber that I mentioned. So anyway, there's just tons of resources on our website. Many of them have bits and pieces about this whole succession plan. So I really want you to take away from today is that this is for the home gardener. This is for the flower farmer. This is for the in-between person. And 
Vegetables Love Flowers can really give you kind of a foundation look at that, right? And in flower farming school, we I apply that to the whole commercial. This is the secret to commercial production too, y'all, whether you're producing vegetables or flowers. Um, it's that planting over and over and over again in smaller plantings to have that consistent supply so that you can take care of what you're doing and to really um, be able to either process and consume what you're growing if you're a vegetable gardener or if you're a vegetable farmer to have a constant supply for your customers and the same in vegetables. So y'all, I just really wanna say that succession planting is something that I did not jump on for the first half of my gardening life and my farming life. Do you hear Carolyn? I think she wants to come on screen. If she would come up here, I'd show her to you guys right off. Um, she's here every year and she lives in this little shade garden behind me. Um, hey, Jenny. And um, so this is not hard at all. And once you embrace it, um, you can really embrace it and make the most of it. So I'm gonna pick this up, y'all, my little thing. First, I wanna show you this. I have to turn the camera around. Look at this little bucket of flowers. I'm gonna back up. These are the leftovers from 12 days ago. This little bucket. This has been in my house, and I have been in love with this bucket of flowers. I mean, Suzanne even stuffs the leftovers into a bucket beautifully, right? And I had to bring it out of my house because the Ami Magus, which is what this is, these are cool flowers, by the way, the Ami Magus is starting to shed and I think it's contributing to my, my allergy problem. So I'm gonna turn this on now. Oh, nope, I didn't mean to do that. I'm gonna turn this around. Um, and so here's the stage of succession we're in here on the farm. That is, let's find this little girl, where is she? Let me just, now she, oh, there she is. She's over on the grapevine right up there. She's a little Carolina. I know she's a house friend. And she is, she's a little teeny thing, but she's got a really big voice. So the stage of, I'll let y'all look at that while I'm talking. Oh, now she's on top of that birdhouse right there. Um, oh, and she's getting ready to go in. Yep, she just popped in there. Um, the stage we're in here is the first warm season round of plantings are in the ground and on their way. And Bobo is now in the process of starting the second round of um, warm season tender angles. So let's walk back here. And as always, I just wanna remind everybody to please like and share this broadcast. Um, that helps me and it saves it onto your Facebook feed. And um, of course, you can always go to my blog and see there's Stevie working over there. Um, Stevie, you got a bottle of water? Can I have it, please? Um, sorry, y'all. Oh, so we're in the process of starting the second round of seeds. And we're on the verge of the first round starting to bear. I'll show you um, our sunflowers are getting ready to, can you unscrew the top for me too and I'll just carry it, thank you so much. Um, huh? Oh, he just told me I can't look in his truck because Mama's Day is in there. <laughs> thank you, sweetie. You're welcome. So, um, what I was saying, sorry, is to save and like this and then you can always view the previous, um, Facebook Lives on my blog and they're all under Lisa Live. So I wanna say this too, if we lose internet when I'm walking from one area to another, just hang on and I'll be back. So here we are at the foot, this is my little back garden. So we're staying, I'm at the head, right dead in the middle is our vegetable bed. Um, these are beets, which we're just starting to eat now and they are gorgeous. We're eating the tops and the bottoms. And I'm growing a new bean this year. We grow a lot of string beans on this farm. And um, so we're testing these to offer the seed for next year to see how they grow here. And I think they're filet beans. And then the tall stuff right down there 
our peas that we're um, just now starting to harvest. So these are my dahlias. And as some of you that kind of follow us may know that these wintered over and I was no one was more surprised than I was that they survived. However, we did have a mild winter here and the straw you see is just really not is not what protected them. It is so thin. There's so little of it. Um, they basically just sat out here in these raised beds um, and we're having almost a hundred percent survival. There's a couple of colors. We'll walk down. Look, you can see the bed on this side has been weeded. This side has not been weeded. You can see that'll be my job. Um, I'm cooking for 20 some for lunch tomorrow right after church. So I will not be weeding this afternoon is what I'm saying. See right here, there's some blank spots. You don't see any vegetation. Um, and so I left, I just put their compost on top of them, hoping that maybe they would um, come up. Maybe they were just a little later because there are some late comers. Look down here. So it's so funny. See that little teeny one right there? But look at his neighbor, you know? So I'm giving everybody ample, ample opportunity. And then over here, you're looking at um, Happy Mother's Day to you and to everyone that's watching. This is our Lizzie Anthus. And have they like rocked since last week when I showed these? So the story was the film was ripped off in a windstorm. And I feel like that really happened because I stapled the landscape cloth right up on it and it really created some holes that the wind just ripped it right off. Um, so this Lysianthus will be hand weeded. So I, I compost, used compost as mulch and they are a very happy group of flowers as you can see. So I go to um, Arizona this week. My sister daughter's daughter, Elora, is getting married in Sedona. We're so excited and looking forward to it. And I will, if I don't do anything else on this farm this week, I am netting the Lizzie's before I leave so we don't have any catastrophes. Look at these beans, y'all. Hey, Emily. I was just gonna, I was gonna um, mention, Emily is like the queen of succession planting. Um, and she has mastered it. And now that she's reaped the benefit, she is like a succession planting crazy woman. And it is working so well for her little North Carolina farm. And um, anyway, so these are my string beans. These were just planted last week um, and they're just popping right along. And I have planted two more beds. Um, I don't know if you can see the rows where I've, um, this is lima beans on the left, which I have never grown y'all. Um, and these here, um, and there's just buckwheat planted there. So I'm gonna walk over here to the other garden, and this is where sometimes the Wi-Fi will cough a little bit because I'm moving from one device to another. Um, so out here, this is my big acre garden, and <laughs> um, what you're looking at dead ahead, I just planted in buckwheat. Um, because this is, um, so Elora is being married in Sedona, Arizona, and then we're having an after wedding garden party in June. And typically this whole area right here is all shaded in the evening. And so I just wanted a really pretty backdrop. So I planted buckwheat, which is always just so beautiful. Um, so that's what's there. So let's walk over here and have a look at our succession, our first succession planting, which is pretty much done. So these beds were just planted. This is um, the celosias and there's some marigolds in there. Um, and I have not netted them yet. You know, the, the joy of this whole downsizing business, I mean, instead of me having typically back in our high production days, 40 beds, was a succession, meaning we'd plant 40 hundred foot beds at one time. And obviously that was a whole lot of work and I had a whole lot of help back then. Um, now I'm creating my garden that I can really do a lot of the work myself by pacing myself. So I netted the four beds that are already netted, did that you know, myself in a day. Some did three of them in the morning and one later in that evening. Um, and it, it, again, the succession planting thing is just so dadgum awesome. So these will get netted 
maybe before I go to Sedona, but maybe not. Um, here's one of our sunflower successions. You can see no film. And we're this is our first trial of growing the Pro Cut White. You all, um, all I typically grow are the Pro Cut Oranges. We plant every week. We only plant 500 a week now. Um, but we've added this white night and white light, two different ones, um, into our rotation once a month to see how they do. I'm expecting they're going to be pretty buggy, but we'll try it. So you can see our zinnias are netted. These are one of our rows of tomatoes. They have not been supported yet. And look at these zinnias. They are just blooming rocking. I mean, I'm just so pleased with them. They're just getting ready to pop. This is the perfect stage to net in, y'all. Did I always net this way? Heck no, because when I was doing so much, it was hard to do things really on time. Um, look at that one. Can you see it from the side? I'm, it's hard for me to see out here in the sunlight. Um, so the plants are about 12 inches tall. The netting is at about uh, 12 to 18 inches high. 18 is where it really should be. Um, and they're just getting ready to pop through. And so there's my little eucalyptus patch that I had to help. Those plants were so small. See how some of them are burnt? They got up underneath the film and they fell down in their hole, basically. And the film, the bed was kind of lumpy right here. This is a problem when you're using any kind of film, mulch or, pla I mean, biodegradable or plastic. If the bed's not really flat, it creates these hills and gullies. And if you plant into that gully, the plant is way down in there. Not a problem with a zinnia or a celosia or an azuratum because they just bolt out of the ground. Eucalyptus is a slow grower. So I, in my method of madness, because I have so much compost today, these days, I just mulched on top to push the film down and to help support the plant and it's worked beautifully. Looky there. The first zinnia has popped through the um, netting. That's an awesome thing. Look at the squash. We are growing so many different squashes this year. That, I'm not sure what it is because Bobo did not put a stick on that one. This is a new heirloom variety of zucchini. And looky here. Wait a minute, y'all. Another great use for steaks in the garden is, I can't see what y'all are seeing. I'm trying to show you. Let's see, that's not working too good. Is putting your water bottle. It's probably gonna fall off. Anyway, looky here. I have a zucchini. Can y'all see that? So we are just really pumped. So we have all this whole bed. There's a little teeny speck of um, zinnias at the end of this bed. Um, but we have marigolds and azuratum, and there's cosmos and lemon basil and gumphrina and a whole bunch of different celosias um, and zinnias, you know? I mean, people often say, gosh, don't you grow anything else? Well, yeah, we do. I mean, you know, we have our lizzies and um, sunflowers, which is what we should walk down here and look at. Um, but I am telling you, we do bumper business with zinnias. People love those things. And so we just grow a bunch of them. Look at my little tunnel. Can y'all see it? I'm gonna step back a little bit. See, I can't really see what y'all are seeing at all because I'm blinded by the light. Um, so this little tunnel is a fun thing. And if it works out, we're gonna have a full garden tunnel next year. We've got um, gourds, those decorative pretty gourds, not the birdhouse gourds, cucumbers, and then cantaloupes. We're testing them all. So here's our sunflowers. Not the best ever, they need some water, which is on the way, but they're all butted up. So these are several different weeks. I mean, you can see the variation in size. So back here, it looks like, um, so we could have darn sunflowers, shoot, pretty soon, maybe next week, you know? Oh, look, well, looky there, we are gonna have sunflowers. And so a question that I got not long ago is why are the blooms smaller, sunflower blooms smaller this time of the year? And look, there's some that was ju were just planted this week and then um, there's some limelight millet also down there. Sunflowers um, are day length sensitive, even though pro cuts are no supposedly not. They are sensitive, but they will still bloom. And so oftentimes what I experience is 
that the early blooms and the late blooms, when the days are still not as long as they're gonna be in the middle of summer, um, you can see that they're short. They're also short because they, they'd be taller if they had water. Um, but the blooms tend to be smaller with the petals sometimes long. But you know what I've learned, y'all? I was very reluctant at first to offer those to my commercial customers. They request them small now. So it's based on this. So it works out really well. I, I never change the spacing. I do the same spacing no matter what time of year. And we just, um, we just stick with it and take whatever goes. And then there we've got some corn growing there. Um, so y'all, I just, what I really want to hit home is succession planting. So we will be planting again, basically the same garden you're looking at. And then we will plant it yet again in about four or five more weeks. Um, back when we were in full production, we would actually squeeze in five successions of a regular recipe. We still do sunflowers every week. Um, and you know, I mean, you can just, you just, you can produce a lot of flowers in a small space. And if you have an area that's starting to not produce well or has a pest problem, we just rip it out and plug the next succession in there, right? So I really wanna, um, I'm gonna walk down here to the shade and then we have to get off here. I have to go cook for however many, um, and I have to bake cakes for Mother's Day event at church in the morning too. So. I'm trying to get down here. So this is um, where I told you I just planted buckwheat. I just want to stand in the shade and show you this one last thing, and then I'm signing off of here. Um, this is what I call my native island. You know, I have a native border all the way around my property. But this whole 20 foot, maybe that's 20 foot wide, I can't tell. Um, this was where I planted one bed of Triloba rudbeckia about seven years ago. I mean, Triloba rudbeckia is the most amazing bouquet filler, commercial customer lover. Um, I mean, my sister said, if you don't grow anything else, just grow Triloba rudbeckia and zinnias and lemon basil, and I can make stuff work. Um, so it's a strong reseeder. And so I realized the year after I planted it here that, golly day, we mowed it, but before I could plant anything else, it re had reseeded everywhere. And I thought, shoot, I'm just gonna leave it. So now it's kind of grown into this massive island that is not only the habitat for all kinds of creatures, because we don't mow this, we don't do anything to it. I mean, there's turtles that live in there, um, the butterflies hang out, and we harvest thousands of stems of triloba. I'm not kidding you, this is like 100 feet long, or maybe 80, 90 feet long. Um, and they're all at different stages. Those that are deep down in the weeds, I almost have to put like rattlesnake boots on to go in here. Um, but there's some that are already on the brink of blooming and there's a whole bunch of little teeny ones. So they kind of succession plant themselves. Um, so, you know, we got monarch butterflies. I don't know if y'all can see him flying by. Him and his misses, I saw them earlier. Um, so y'all, I'm glad, just please remember to like and save this and share it and um, visit our website, thegardenersworkshop.com. Sign up for the farm news. I'll send you some free resources. And um, I'm trying to think of something else. There is no Facebook Live this coming weekend because I'm gonna be a little busy at a wedding. And um, anyway, so. Thank you all so much. Oh, um, let me just put this water down yet again. Now I can read. You're welcome, Angie. What Rebecca is that? It's Triloba. It's on our website. We sell the seed to it. You can often find it at Native Plant Sales. Oh, you're welcome, Becky. Hey, Chris. So Amy asks about strategies, about marigolds and keeping pests off. Um, I don't think about those kinds of things. I mean, our whole farm is planted in a way to encourage beneficial insects that eat the pests. 
It's not so much a plant keeping them away. So we just interplant them everywhere. Emily, your garden is a dream. Girl, I, I think that about you too. Hey, Ellie, we're all for a sushi. Hey, I'm so glad. Emily's two daughters, Emily um, and I met, so is a far, flower farmer um, in North Carolina. And um, she's probably in her fourth or fifth year, maybe. And she and I met a couple years ago. She came up here, she joined the ASCFG, happened to call me on a slow day for me and said, I'm an ASCFG member. And I was wondering, can I come up and visit you on a share morning so I can just, you know, have a look around. And I um, said, yeah, she had all the right stuff. A, she was already proven that she's trying to be a professional. She joined the association. Um, she offered to come on a day that we already have our gate open and people coming for our members only market um, Anyway, we hit it off and she had a yellow Labrador retriever Who she loved as much as we love Barry and that just we instantly bonded anyway, so we've become friends and um, she came and was one of the helpers at our boot camp and um, was part of flower farming school and Her girls and she came up here for a visit and um, we went out to lunch and she has two girls who are beautiful little girls, not little girls, they're like, I'm guessing 11 and eight or something. They're like sushi eating maniacs, y'all. I was so sorry, I'm not a sushi, eat, sushi eater. So anyway, so we have this great relationship with Emily and um, you need to check out her. Emily, post your farm link on here so people can like your Facebook page and Instagram. Emily posts photos of the bouquets that she sells um, to stores every week and they are gorgeous y'all. You just got to connect with her. So I don't think I see any. Can I still get Lizzyanthus plugs and plant them soon? Here's the, the thing Angie. If you're planting Lizzyanthus can be plant planted now with a lot of care and a lot of help. However, they really get established better when it's cooler outside. They still don't bloom till July or August, um, but what you'll fight is probably short stem. So I would say I'd wait till next year. You know, y'all, it's so much easier just to forget stuff we're kind of behind on and move on to the next. Helps you get ahead. So I really don't see, I can't hardly see. I want to save everyone. Oh, yeah, there you go. So, Sean and I will be doing something fun together. Sorry, y'all. I'm just reading all the comments right now. So, I do not see any questions. Oh, here we go. Joy, I'm struggling with starting my Coxcomb and Celosia Pampas, Pampas Plume. You know what? It's so funny. I talked to somebody else yesterday. Celosia can be testy. I think it's testy because it only should be firmly seated on the surface of the soil block. It needs light to germinate, but it also needs to be kept moist. So a germination chamber really does well with that, which is just like a steam bath. But if you're using a heat mat, you might try, I'm not a dome user, but I'm thinking if you're struggling, maybe try a dome that'll trap the moisture um, or mist them three or four times a day. Um, but it's warm, light, moist is what Celosia needs. So y'all, I need to sign off here. Um, I appreciate everybody coming and y'all look, the houses are coming. It's like jaws circling my farm. That's what I imagine in my head. Dun, 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 right? And so there's, see that house? There's two more houses in process. I don't know if you can see the black silk cloth. All right, we've been trying, I'm gonna walk down here. We've been trying to decide According to the plat that I have from over there, there's supposed to be another house, like right outside of my fence, but it looks now like they're a little short of land. This lot is so much smaller than all their other lots. So I am hoping that they're not gonna build a house there, but you know what? It doesn't really matter because, oh, I can't go back that far. Sorry, y'all. I lost you there for a minute. Have to get back. Sorry, y'all. Lost you. I can't go back that far. Um, anyway, so houses are popping up like weeds around here. So there you are. Signing off, and I'll see you in a couple of weeks. 
and everybody have a great one and go check out the new blog about beans and squash and how to go about doing that. So till we meet again, ciao.